Thank you for joining us today at the John Wesley Powell River History Museum in Green River, Utah for a tour of our new exhibit, Our Rivers, Our Community, which opened this summer on July 18th. This exhibit was inspired by the Smithsonian traveling exhibit, Waterways, and as part of the Museum on Main Street program that we're participating in this, in this year in partnership with Utah Humanities. Our exhibit focuses on the importance of water for our local community. One of our main goals for this project was to tell a more holistic story of water in our region by including more local history and Native American history than we currently have in our permanent exhibitions. This first section highlights the importance of rivers in the West where water is very scarce. We've used artifacts to highlight some of the ways that Fremont and Ute peoples used water in our region. We chose these artifacts because they all have a local connection. These baskets are on loan from the Bureau of Land Management, but they were actually found by some local school kids nearby several years ago. The other artifacts are from Range Creek, which is located in the Book Cliffs north of Green River, and they are on loan from the Wilcox family who live part of the year in town. Next, we transition into a discussion of John Wesley Powell and his ideas for how to manage the scarcity of water in the West as it was being settled by the United States. This section debunks some of the common myths about Powell, his motivations, and his legacy. We also have a map created by Powell in 1891. Powell was a government scientist, and instead of the boxy states we have today, he thought the West should be organized around watersheds which is what the different colors represent. He also proposed strict limitations on how water could be used within those watersheds. His plan was rejected, and the US government pretty much did the opposite of what he suggested. And Powell actually ended up predicting a lot of the water problems we're dealing with in the West today. I wanted to point out these circular reflection labels that we have sprinkled throughout the exhibit. These ask visitors a question and have them dig a little deeper and think about their personal connection to water. For example, this one asks them to find Green River on the map and think about who they share a watershed with in their own community. Next, we'll talk about local history. The river creates both challenges and opportunities for building a community. The area around Green River has been an important river crossing for hundreds and probably thousands of years. Here we feature some of the different river crossings during the historic period. We are also an agricultural community. You may have heard of our famous melons, so the river really is essential for life here. This section talks about the tremendous amount of work it took over many decades to create the dam and canals that we still rely on for irrigation today. These nails, donated by Dale Gray, come from our local Tisher Dam during a recent rehabilitation project. This slip scraper, on loan from Jackie and Randy Nelson, was likely used for farming and in the dam's original construction over 100 years ago. We wanted to connect the local history to some contemporary water issues, so we featured these archival photos of water delivery in Green River before we had a running water system with this recent photo of water delivery on the Navajo Nation. Water access is still a huge problem in our country today, and this disproportionately affects uh, Native Americans and people of color. We use another reflection label here to get visitors to think about the privilege of running water in their own life. Next, we have this fun section about the Friendship Cruise. This was a much beloved annual event that used to draw hundreds of boaters to town for races and a river float between Green River and Moab. The reason we included this event in our exhibition is because recreation on the river is one of the most common ways that people develop a personal connection to water. We also talk about how some river runners have extended their love of the river into environmental advocacy efforts in our area. Here, we zoom out and focus on the Green River as part of the wider Colorado River watershed. 
we have some information about what watersheds are and how communities today are affected both upstream and downstream by sharing a watershed. In this corner, we focus more directly on climate change, which has had a deep impact across the entire Colorado River watershed and the 40 million or so people who depend on its rivers, including us here in Green River. We end the exhibit on a reflective note with an evening campfire at Swayze's Beach, which is located just up the road from the museum. We ask visitors again to think about their personal connection to water and perhaps even share their river story on social media with some suggested hashtags. In 2021, we will be hosting the Smithsonian Traveling Exhibit, Waterways, from April 3rd to June 6th. We hope you've enjoyed this preview and we hope that some of you will be able to join us next spring. You can follow the John Wesley Powell River History Museum or Utah Humanities for updates. Thank you for joining us.